Okay, so magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. So, uh, my uh, greetings to course to our school's division superintendent, Sir Danilo E. Despi. And of course, to our ASDS, Ma'am Sheila, Maria Sheila Villagoda. And of course, our CID Chief, Sir Gerson Vitoralde. And of course, to the trigger of this program, to the head, to the brain of this program, Ma'am Sally M. Cirillo, our e ESP coordinator, uh, edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga, um, supervisor, division supervisor, and of course, so the school heads and uh, the principals of our elementary and uh, secondary, and of course, so our teachers and guidance designates and guidance counselors of uh, SDO Iriga, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Okay, so kumusta po tayo? So napakarami na po ng ating uh, natutunan para sa hapon na ito. So this time, I will be discussing about the homeroom guidance um, annexes. Okay, so the homeroom guidance forms. Ano po ba ang mga kailangan nating i-accomplish along uh, our implementation of this homeroom guidance program? So... Uh, I know that at this particular moment, you have learned a lot already from the discussion of our two brilliant resource speakers. Am I right? So talagang napakalinaw ng kanilang ginawang discussion at wala ng dahilan para hindi natin talaga ma-implement ito ng maayos. So we already understand the rationale of the homeroom guidance. And of course, through uh, Ma'am Sheila Bulawan, okay, um, we were able to uh, uh, understand the guidelines and the procedures of the implementation. So, by the way, my greetings also to Ma'am Sheila and, of course, to Ma'am Marites Kalisin. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, napakagandang discussion uh, tungkol po sa ating homeroom guidance program. So, in this particular session, as I've said, my task is to present to you the homeroom guidance forms and later on magpapakita ako ng samples ng mga modules na gagamitin po natin para sa ating uh, homeroom guidance program. So these homeroom guidance forms and uh, are included po in the annexes of the DM OUCI 2021-346. Ito nga pong diniscuss ni Ma'am Sheila or this called the revised implementation guidelines of homeroom guidance HG during crisis situation for school year 2021 to 2022. So, handa na po ba tayo na malaman kung ano itong mga annexes na kailangan po nating i-accomplish. So, specifically po, I will be discussing, as I've said, the five annexes of the said memo. And likewise, I will be showing you a sample of the homeroom guidance module and the schedule of the distribution of the homeroom guidance self-learning modules or ito nga po mga SLM natin. Ayan. So, we have here actually five annexes. So, meron tayo. For Annex 1, we have the homeroom guidance class observation tool. We have Annex 2, we have the homeroom guidance school implementation tool. That is, that is for school level. And of course, we have Annex 3. We have the Homeroom Guidance Division Monitoring and Evaluation tool for the division level. And we have Annex 4. We have the Homeroom Guidance Regional Monitoring and Evaluation tool for the regional level. And Annex 5 is the Homeroom Guidance Learners Development Assessment tool or uh, for the K-12. Ayan, so ito po ang ating limang forms na kailangan po nating uh, alamin para sa hapon na ito. So, if you if you will notice, iba-iba po ang annexes and these are designed po sa iba't-ibang level of governance. So, let us take note po that the, again, the success and sustainability of the program will only be ensured if there is a systematic and adequate monitoring and evaluation. Malinaw po yan na nakalagay sa ating memo. So uh, again, i-reiterate lang po natin na ang monitoring and evaluation shall be done uh, ayan, from September 2020 to July 2022. So ibig sabihin, kailangan nag-start na tayo sa pag-monitor po ng ating homeroom guidance program. So 
reports on the said, uh, reports on the results of the monitoring and evaluation of course shall be submitted at the end of the school year so ayan so the following are the offices and units directly involved in the implementation of, of the monitoring of the program so syempre meron tayong the central office regional and the division down to the school level and to the class advisors ayan so let us start with the annex 1 ayan so ito po ang uh, homeroom guidance class observation tool so school head again supervises and monitors the implementation of homeroom guidance and ensure that proper intervention for each learner will be provided. Kaya meron po tayo nitong tool na ito, ito pong homeroom guidance class observation tool. So uh, specifically, the school head shall ensure the following. Like we have to ensure uh, that uh, we prepared and conduct the homeroom guidance class observation for Annex 1. And of course, we were able to submit the homeroom guidance school implementation report. Ayan. So Therefore, the school head po or our dear principal po leads the monitoring in coordination po, of course, uh, with the guidance counselor or the guidance designate using the homeroom guidance observation, uh, school observation tool and homeroom guidance school implementation tool. So, uh, ito po ang itsura ng ating uh, homeroom guidance uh, tool, homeroom guidance class observation tool. So again, the one who will accomplish this is our school heads, okay? Are the school heads. Um, uh, so you probably you might ask me, ano po ang uh, use ng uh, tool na ito? Again, um, uh, kailangan po natin i-monitor ang uh, implementation po ng ating homeroom guidance program. Kaya meron po tayo nitong mga tools na ito, okay? So we will know if the homeroom guidance program of the school is properly implemented. Okay? So, but then before we proceed to the content of the tool, you may ask me din po if ilang beses ba kailang i-observe ang isang klase. So, by the way, lahat po ng, uh, ng uh, sinasabi ko po sa discussion ko ay uh, galing din po sa orientation na uh, Pinanood ko, ayan, na kinandak po ni Ma'am Jona Kirstin Valdez of the Bureau of Curriculum uh, and Development of the Central Office. So, um, para, para po mas, uh, maging malinaw po ang aking magiging discussion at uh, alam ko din po kung paano ito i-discuss, na, na, nanood din na din po ako ahead of time sa discussion po uh, ng, ng ating uh, um, uh, in charge sa central office, uh, ito nga pong discussion ni Ma'am Jonah Christine, Christine Valdez ng uh, Bureau of Curriculum and Development. So, according to her, ano ayan? So, maari po tayong mag-observe as, as a principal, as school head po, kahit uh, at least once a year. Okay? Once in every every school year. So, siguro uh, ma maari po natin itong, uh, again, linawin mamaya kay Ma'am Sheila Bulawan kung nandito pa po siya. Ayan, so maari po natin uh, i-clarify uh, ito. Pero according to Ma'am Jona, kahit daw po isang beses lang tayo uh, mag-observe in one year. So, our target is we must have at least once a year just to ensure that the program is properly implemented. So, hindi naman po ito parang igigrade mismo or i-evaluate mismo yung advisor. So, not necessarily the advisor ang i-evaluate natin, but yung homeroom guidance, yung implementation ng homeroom guidance ng class advisor. Ayan. So, ang tinitingnan po natin dito is paano po mas mapapabuti pa natin ang implementation ng homeroom guidance sa loob ng classroom or depending po sa learning modality na gagamitin natin. So, magbabary din po ito. So, ayan. Tingnan po natin ang uh, ating homeroom guidance class observation tool. Kung mapapansin po ninyo, ayan, nakalagay po dyan. Ayan, kailangan natin ilagay ang uh, pangalan ng, uh, ng uh, advisor. Ayan, yung, the, yung grading. So, not necessarily every grading period daw po tayo mag, uh, magkakandak ng observation. Kahit once a year lang, we have to put the school year. And of course, we have to put the name of the advisor, yung rating na kalagay din po dyan, the date and time, and the grade level and section. And uh, it is also written there that to the observer, we have to check the box to indicate your assessment guided by the scale below. So, zero, 
no chance to observe. One, not observed. Two, observed but insufficient. Three, sufficiently observed. And four, sufficiently observed and commendable. Okay, A scale from zero to four. Ayan. So again, magiging uh, ang... Uh, pag-observe po natin ay depende po magbabari siya sa gagamitin nating learning modality. Ayan. So, malinaw pong nakalagay dyan. So, um, may mga, mga ano dyan, may mga items na maaaring hindi naman talaga natin ma-observe. Ayan. So, magbabari din ito. So, let's take a look at the observation tool. So, ito po ang ating observation tool. Okay. So, ano, again, ano po ang imomonitor sa atin ng ating, uh, ano, ang, ano ba ang mga imomonitor sa ating mga class advisor ni school head? Okay, so ito, ito po, itong mga items na ito ang kailangang imonitor sa atin po mga, sa mga class advisors ni school head. Okay, so ayan, nakalagay po dyan, number one, make sure that the learning modality is conducive for learning and, and uh, activities. Ayan, number two, effectively organizes learning situations to meet the objectives of the class presentation. Number three, uses instructional methods that encourage relevant learner participation in the learning process. Number four, implements the module in accordance to the guidelines. Number five, communicates clearly and effectively to the level of learners. Number six, explains important ideas in a clear and practical way. Number seven, demonstrates command of the topic discussed. Number eight, responds appropriately to learner questions and comments. Number nine, provides time and direction for individual thought prior to group discussions, if applicable. And number 10, prepares, checks, distributes efficiently the materials for activities. Number 11, adequately prepares learners to undertake the specific activity. And number 12, provides learners adequate time to reflect on the activity utilizing a variety of uh, process skills. Like for example, dem demonstrate, predict, analyze, conclude, and synthesize. So again, if you are going to take a look, uh, take a look closely the items, as you can see in some other items, maaari pong no chance to observe. Okay? Kasi hindi naman applicable yung learning modality kung saan ini-implement ang homeroom guidance. And accordingly, that is understandable. So, yung mga items dyan ay nakadepende po sa uri ng learning modality na gagamitin po natin sa ating mga schools. So, remember also na kung ang limitation ay ang learning modality or if no chance to observe, it's okay to put zero. So, kung natin ipipinit, so if you have no chance to observe okay lang naman daw po yan according to Madonna so we just have to take note na kung ganito mo dapat pala for example messenger kasi we have to recognize the fact na hindi talaga mahirap talaga na i-print lahat ng mga SLMs Okay, para like for example sa case namin, we are more than 3,000 sa aming school. So napakahirap na i-reproduce ng uh, 3,000 modules. Okay, sa isang module, 3,000 copies. So in, according to uh, the central office, hindi naman daw po tayo nililimit sa printed modules lang. We can always distribute um, uh, mga, mga SLMs through messenger, Okay, through any other uh, means, ano po, for us to be able to conduct the homeroom guidance. So, ayan, kung yun lamang daw po kasi ang available sa bata, so hindi naman po natin pwedeng ipilit po yun sa pag uh, ng, ng uh, form na ito. So, definitely po, the teacher, okay? hindi kaya ng school na mag-print ng uh, modules, iisip po tayo ng ibang pamamaraan kung paano po natin maidi-deliver yung mga modules po natin, ang ating mga homeroom guidance modules. Ayan. So, uh, malinaw po yan sa atin. Ano? Okay. So, 
Um, ayan. So, we have here actually 20 items under Annex 1 for the Annex 1 for our class observation tool. So, number 13, attends to the learner's concerns in different modalities. Number 14, life experiences. Number 19, encourages the learners to apply their realizations on the lessons or, is, or their insights. 20, maintain safety procedures in facilitating learners' tasks. Okay, so ayan po ang ating uh, um, Annex 1. Okay, so if you will notice, meron po tayo dito ng uh, Okay, paano po ba kinocompute ang uh, ating uh, Annex 1? Okay, we just have to add up score na meron, merong 1 to 4 na scores, ayan. So again, i-add up lang, i-add up lang po natin yung mga yung mga items na merong scores na 1 to 4. Okay? Kasi hindi na natin i-include yung no chance to observe. Okay? Malinaw po 'yon. Um, uh, so then we are just going to multiply by 4 uh, times 100%. So the verbal description, if the teacher gets 92 to 100, ayan, it means na outstanding, 69 to 91 above average, 46% to 68% means average, 24% to 45% uh, means below average, 23% and below means needs improvement. Ayan. So, sana naman po, hindi tayo dito mapupunta sa needs improvement. So, um, I hope na at least, di ba, dito tayo man lang sa average, pataas kung pwede ng outstanding. Okay. And also, we have to put some uh, the commendations. Ayan, napaka-importante din ng commendation kasi dito po manggagaling yung best practices, okay, ng mga schools or ng, uh, ng teacher, okay, ng advisor in particular. Like for example, okay, meron kami uh, isang advisor na nagsuggest na gusto niyang gumawa ng separate answer sheet para sa ating module so that mas maganda ang uh, pagkaka ang, uh, kumbaga, ang magiging sagot response ng mga bata. So sabi ko, it's okay. I will be putting it in our one of our best practices sa ating school. And likewise din po, the division level, so we are going to report it as part of our, of our best practices. And of course, for the recommendation, if ilalagay natin na um, syempre, uh, para malaman natin kung paano ba natin i-improve ang Im implementation po ng, uh, ng homeroom guidance. So again, kailan po ito Itong specific na tool na ito, ito pong Annex 1, definitely at the end of the school year, okay? No need naman po na quarterly, okay? At the end of the school year lamang po. And again, ang tinitingnan po natin dito ay ang implementation ng homeroom guidance, not just the performance of the teacher. Kaya wag po tayong matatakot, my dear advisors, kung tayo po ay irate ng ating principal because it only means to say na hindi lamang naman po kayo ang tinitingnan dito ang ini-evaluate but of course yung implementation ng homeroom guidance sa kabuuan okay so uh, maaring uh, ayan again maaring magtanong kayo ilang beses so isang beses lamang po ang importante na monitor po ng maayos ang implementation ng ating homeroom guidance okay so ayan so sana po malinaw ng ating Annex 1 let's proceed to the Annex 2 okay the Annex 2 is the homeroom guidance school implementation report. So, it is stated in the memo that the school head supervises and monitors the implementation of homeroom guidance and ensures that 
proper intervention for each learner will be provided. Specifically, the school head shall ensure to submit the homeroom guidance school implementation report. So, ito na po ang magiging report ng school sa kabuuan. Ano? Sa galing din po ito sa Annex 1 na, na sinabmit po ng ating mga dear class advisors. Okay. So, for the Annex 2, Again, ito yung kabuuan. So, from the individual classes, meron naman tayong school level implementation tool or ito na nga po yung implementation report that has to be submitted to our division supervisor. So, ano po yung bago sa form na ito? So, actually, um, ang memo ito ay uh, katulad ng nabanggit po ni Ma'am Marites and Ma'am Sheila, ito po ay revise ni revise natin. So, may nabago po sa mga forms din po natin. Katulad po dito sa Annex 2, isa po sa mga nabago dito, is uh, tinitingnan na po natin kung ilan ang total number of classes po ng school. Okay, ilan po bang classes meron ang eskwelahan po? At uh, ito po yung wala sa unang taon ng implementation ng ating homeroom guidance. So, hindi po natin nakuha yung demographics uh, niya or yung bilang. Ano? So, ang gusto nating makita is ilang klase or ilang section ba ang meron sa school na yun at ilan bang klase or section ang nag-implement nitong homeroom guidance program natin. Ayan, so kaya makikita agad natin sino ba yung mga teachers, sino ba yung mga klase, sino ba yung mga sections na hindi nag-implement ng homeroom guidance. So ang gagawin lang naman po dito sa sa ano na to, sa form na ito is i-check lang po natin ng box, ano? So uh, ang the DepEd Central Office of course, would like to know kung saan ba tayo nahihirapan. So yun po yung pinaka-purpose ng mga monitoring na ito para malaman din po from uh, from us, from the school, to the division office, pataas po sa central office, malaman din po nila kung saan tayo nahihirapan sa pag-implement ng ating homeroom guidance. At makikita po ito through our homeroom guidance implementation report. So we have to be very honest in accomplishing this report. Again, that will not be taken against our uh, teachers. Ayan. So, kasi kung, kung totoo naman talagang merong tayong difficulty, we have to um, write it. Uh, we have to, of course, um, indicate it in our uh, monitoring uh, report. Okay? So, malinaw po yan. So, nakalagay dyan. Of course, um, uh, meron po tayong directions. You are just going to check the box that corresponds to your answer in each item using the legend below. So, ano pa ang ating legend? E, evident 95% to 100% of the total number of classes complied. Ayan, EI evident but inadequate means 50% to 94% of the total number of classes complied. NE or not evident, less than 50% of the total number of classes complied. NA, not applicable or the, the area is not applicable or it is not possible to comply. Ayan. So, ano po ba ang uh, mga kabilang sa implement, Homeroom Guidance School implementation report na ito? Okay. So, ano po yung mga items under this? So, ano yung mga kailangang i-monitor ni school heads? So, actually, we have five areas to monitor. So, we have the first one, the curriculum implementation and compliance. Ayan. So, nakalagay po dyan. Um, okay. So, number one, Homeroom guidance milks is being followed properly. Okay. So kung ito ay kung ang homeroom guidance milks ay pina-follow natin, ano po ang evidence? So kung mapapansin po ninyo sa pangalawang box, nakalagay po diyan na kailangan nating i-submit ang mga evidence na to. Kailangan i-submit ng school itong mga itong portfolio po nating ito, itong evidence. Kasama na po dito ang of course class schedule and learners output uh, portfolio. So, hindi naman nangangahulugan na lahat. Ah. So, at least kahit sample lamang po ng class schedule and learners output per po portfolio ang maipakita natin sa ating division supervisor. Okay? So, number two, objectives of the program are achieved at the end of the school year. Okay? So, ano po ang patunay na na-achieve natin yung uh, o mga objectives? para sa ating homeroom guidance. So, syempre, kailangan nating maipakita na yung mga learners output. So, therefore, i-remind lamang po natin ang ating mga class advisor na kailangan pala meron tayong 
portfolio na ipiprepare for each um, student. Kada estudyante dapat may portfolio. Dito po nakalagay ang lahat ng output ng ating mga estudyante. Okay? Including also sa as evidence, as part of the evidence under this uh, under item number 2 is the minute submitting of advisors per grade level with guidance counselor designate um, HG's e or regarding or um, HG's impact on learners. Ayan. So, kailangan talaga natin na mag-conduct ng meeting okay, sa ating mga class advisors as school head. Okay. And of course, the second one, we have the delivery process. That's the second area that we have to monitor. Okay. Number one, Homeroom guidance classes are programmed for the whole school year. Ano po yung patunay na kinakandak natin ito? Of course, we have to um, include in our portfolio, school portfolio, yung class program and teaching teacher loading. Number two, learners and parents are acquainted with the competencies that they need to master per domain in each quarter. Okay? And of course, we have to uh, prepare the letter. Okay, letter to parents uh, by advisor. Okay, regarding that uh, the competencies uh, for the uh, for the quarter. Ayan. So kahit evidences lang na nagkaroon ng parent teacher conference. Okay. So yung number one wala masyadong problema dahil madali lamang itong engage. So makikita natin sa class program. So we also we already have our class program. For number two, uh, we can gauge this by of course the evidences na nagkaroon tayo ng parent or teacher and teacher conference and of course number three class advisors are being uh, monitored as they implement the HG ano po yung ating evidence dito the results uh, of monitoring tool and post conference of guidance counselor designate with the advisor so yan po ang ating mga kailangang iprepare and of course the third area to be monitored is the assessment Ayan, assessment of learners' development. Okay, so number one, learners are oriented on the learning objective and how their development will be assessed. Okay, so ano po ang kailangan nating, uh, kailangan nating evidence dyan? Okay, we need of course a documentation of learners' orientation about the learning objectives and o o evaluation of their development. So, we have to, of course, recognize um, the importance of orienting our learners about HG. So, napaka-importante na hindi lamang po natin ibibigay yung mga SLMs, yung mga modules sa ating mga learners, na hindi man lang sina sila ino-orient kung ano po ba ang homeroom guidance at para saan ito. So, para sa taon na ito, so malinaw na sinasabi po sa atin na kailangan na nating ilagay ang ating mga, ang kanilang rating sa, uh, sa kanilang mga card and sa kanilang SF9 and SF10. So, uh, kailangan alam din po ito ng, ng ating mga uh, teachers, uh, I mean ng ating mga learners and uh, ating mga parents. So, another uh, probably one of the problems also is hindi sinasagutan daw ng mga estudyante ang ating uh, homeroom guidance modules. Kasi nga, hindi sinasagutan, hindi maayos yung uh, pagsagot ng ating mga estudyante dahil hindi nila, hindi nila alam ang kahalagahan nitong homeroom guidance uh, modules natin. So, kaya naman nangangailangan talaga ng orientation. Okay, so kailangan natin syempre ng documentation. And of course, number two, Assessment results are explained to the learners, leading to their realization of the areas of improvement. Ayan. So, kaya kailangan natin ng documentation of conference with the learners about their development. Okay. And of course, the fourth area to be monitored is the supervision of homeroom guidance implementation. So, accordingly, the school head can designate or assign this uh, monitoring ano po, uh, to our uh, um of course, to, uh, to, to someone, okay? Like, for example, to our guidance designate or to our guidance counselors. So, ayan. So, a clear monitoring plan, okay? 
um, guidance counselor, designate, and school head before the start of the program is evident. Ayan, kailangan na natin ng monitoring plan of school heads and guidance counselor designate. And number two, monitoring plan is properly implemented. Uh, we need a documentation of the actual monitoring results. So, uh, monitoring results are discussed with the concerned uh, personnel uh, so as to encourage actions needed to improve the, the program delivery. Okay, so we need, of course, the minutes of meeting with a concerned uh, personnel and the accomplished uh, HG monitoring tool for school level. Okay, monitoring results are utilized to improve the program delivery. So we need, of course, the matrix of monitoring results and the actions taken. Number six, prop, uh, proper coordination, planning, and corrective feedback system are being enforced. So we need, of course, um, a, 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 um, a minutes of meeting and post-conference and documentation. And number six, capacity building uh, for HG is being conducted. So, of course, documentation of teachers and personal training with the attached, utilized budget and recorded training. Okay. So, yun po ang ating fourth area na kailangang i-monitor. And of course, the fifth one is the, for the administrative concerns. So, orientation for learners and their parents is conducted by the school year before the start of uh, the school before the start of school year. Ayan. So, kailangan po natin, of course, ng documentation of learners and parents' orientation. So, after po nitong division level training po natin, still, we are required to conduct an orientation for our learners and for our parents. And as much as possible, since hindi lahat nakapag-attend nitong division orientation natin, ang lahat ng mga teachers, so we also have to orient our teachers regarding this program. Ano? And of course, we have number two, an adequate budget is allotted for homeroom guidance expect, uh, expenses. So, malinaw po na nakalagay sa ating memo na lahat po ng uh, DepEd school shall include all expenses relative to homeroom guidance in their annual implementation plan and school improvement plan. Ayan. And of course, um, as evidence, kailangan po natin na mag-attach ng approved budget um, versus financial report of homeroom guidance, like for example, the materials, training expenses, and it's and, and others, you know. And we also have number three, materials and relevant supplies, like for example, online and printed learning materials are available for the learners and teachers of homeroom guidance. So, kailangan po natin ang inventory of supplies and materials versus reports of utilization. So, maaaring i-attach din po natin ang evidence natin dito as part of the evidence na isinend natin yung mga soft copy ng module sa ating mga students. Again, hindi po tayo nililimit lang sa mga nakalagay na evidences po dito. Kasi kung meron po tayong ibang pamamaraan din sa para ma-comply po ang ating homeroom guidance sa program implementation, itong mga guidelines, so maari po natin idagdag as part of our evidence. Okay? And of course, um, uh, number four, the learning modality is appropriate and conducive uh, for the conduct of the program. So, number of learners in each learning modality. So, kailangan lang natin i-attach dyan kung ilan bang learners, okay, in each learning modality. And number five, duties and responsibilities of personnel are clearly defined. So, of course, the documentation of orientation for the personnel and teachers. Number six, Correct reports are submitted. Uh, evidence we have a year. Uh, we need to submit year-end report by the school, and of course, issues and concerns based on the reports are acted upon. So, kailangan lamang po natin pakita ang ating matrix of issues and concerns from the reports and actions taken. Ayan. So, yan po ang uh, summary ng report sa im school implementation ng ating homeroom guidance program. So, kailangan lamang pong pumirma ng ating mga guidance counselor and designate and uh, meron po dyan date, school head, and of course, uh, you also have to um, uh, sign in this particular form. Okay, so now, I hope na malinaw na po sa atin ang Annex 2. Again, this will be... Um, complied or uh, yeah kailangan itong i-accomplish ng ating mga dear uh, guidance designates and school head
Now, for the Annex 3, okay, we have the Homeroom Guidance Division Monitoring and Evaluation Tool. Ito na po ang sa division level. So, here, the division office shall make the summary of reports of all school. So, in our case, it is Ma'am Sally Cerillo, our edukasyon sa pagpapakatao supervisor, okay, division supervisor, ang mag accomplish po nito. Okay, so, sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao supervisor under the Curriculum Implementation Division or CID in coordination with the guidance counselor designate in the division office leads the monitoring using the Homeroom Guidance Division Monitoring and Evaluation Tool. So, the division monitoring results shall be submitted to the regional ESP supervisor. So, yung report ni Ma'am Sally ay syempre, ibibigay niya din, submit niya din kay Ma'am Sheila Bulawan as our ESP regional supervisor. Now, uh, mapapansin po ninyo under Annex 3, ayan po, halos kapareha, kapareho lamang po siya nung Annex 2. So, again, ang, ang uh, pinagkaiba lamang po nito sa ating form last year, ayan, so nakalagay na din po dyan, yung total number of schools in the division. Okay, ilan ba ang, uh, ang school natin? Elementary uh, school and uh, secondary and uh, senior high school. And we also have to, Ma'am Sally have also to put there the total number of schools that implemented the homeroom guidance program. So, ayan, mamalinaw. For example, sa secondary, um, kung tayo ay 11, okay, 11 na schools, so dapat 11 din yung mag-accomplish mag nitong, uh, mag-implement mag itong homeroom guidance. So, dapat 100%, ano? So, uh, para hindi naman mapahiya ang ating, syempre, ang ating schools division of Iriga. So, dapat 100% na mag-implement and total number of schools monitored and evaluated, observed, and the total number of schools that did not implement the homeroom guidance program. At kailangan syempre i-justify ni Ma'am Sally, i-state ang reason bakit hindi nakapag-implement. Kasi possible naman talaga na may valid reason bakit hindi nakapag-implement ang school. And uh, i-state lamang po ni Ma'am Sally dito po sa uh, particular uh, anong ito? Form. Ayan. Sa Homeroom Guidance Monitor uh, Division Monitoring and Evaluation Tool. Okay. So, as I've said, pareho lamang po ang uh, imino-monitor natin dito. Okay. So, uh, the areas to be monitored, of course, the curriculum, implementation, and compliance. Isa summarize, isa summarize lamang po ni Ma'am Sally yung uh, lahat po na isinabmit nating uh, reports okay from our schools. So, now, the, number two, of course, the delivery process. Um, ayan, kailangan din pong i-monitor ang number 3, assessment of learners' development. So, similar lamang po sa Annex 2. Okay? Supervision of homeroom guidance uh, implementation as the fourth area. And the fifth area is the administrative concerns. Ayan. So, as again, similar lamang po. So, again, if we cannot present evidence listed, the rule of the thumb is that we can present alternative evidences para malaman din po ng, uh, ng ating uh, course sa division level and sa regional level na talagang nag implement naman tayo. It's just that um, ipa, malamang iba-iba lang din yung uh, pamamaraan natin ng pag-distribute, for example, ng mga SLM sa pag uh, sa pagkandak natin ng orientation. Okay, so uh, may, kailangan lamang po na ipag-present tayo ng evidence kung ano yung available na evidence po ng school and ng division office. Okay, and sa Annex 3, ang pinagkaiba lamang po niya sa Annex 2, ayan, so nakalagay po dyan yung summary of results. So, uh, ilalagay po dyan yung total number of checks per area and identify those that are not evident and evident but inadequate which merit actions to be taken. Okay, so ayan po. So, as I've said, napaka-importante na maging honest tayo sa pag-accomplish ng ating mga forms para malaman din po ng ating mga supervisors kung ano po ang problema para po matulungan din tayo nila. Okay? So, yan. Nakalagay po sa Annex 3. This certifies that the monitoring and evaluation results have been discussed with me and I understand that my signature does not necessarily indicate agreement but acknowledges receipt of the report and that I may respond to 
any and all issues contained in this evaluation, written response must be submitted to the undersigned supervisor within 10 days of date noted below. Ayan. So, yan po ang ating Annex 3. Okay. So, for our Annex 4, so I hope na okay na po tayo sa Annex 3. Anyway, we will have an open forum para po mainti, kung may mga tanong po tayo. Ayan, so ma maaari po nating masagot ang ating mga katanungan for clarifications din po. Ano? And uh, for Annex 4, we have the Homeroom Guidance Regional Monitoring and Evaluation Tool. Okay, so here... The division office shall make uh, the summary of reports of all school in, uh, yan, okay, so Annex 4, I mean, ESP supervisor under the CLMD in coordination with the ESSD focal person for guidance and counseling leads the monitoring in the regional level, focusing on the entire implementation of the homeroom guidance, and they shall submit the homeroom guidance regional monitoring and evaluation tool to the Bureau of Curriculum Development on or before July 12. 2022. Okay, so ito po ang itsura ng ating Annex 4. Ito po ay i-accomplish syempre ng ating uh, regional supervisor. Okay? Homeroom Guidance Regional Monitoring and Evaluation Tool. Okay? So um, uh, we, let's have now Annex 5. Okay, for Annex 5, ito po ang isa sa mga pinaka-importanting form or tool para po sa ating mga class advisors at napaka-importante po na alam nila kung paano po ito i-accomplish. This is the Homeroom Guidance Learners Development Assessment Tool. Okay. So, again, malinaw po na sinasabi sa ating memo na ang Homeroom Guidance shall be reflected in the class program for every school and other documents including the SF9 at SF10 as Homeroom Guidance. Ah. Ayun, no, diba? Ilalagay lang po natin Homeroom Guidance. So, however, yung details po niya, ano? So, yung pinaka mga details po, ay shall be attached to SF9. At ang sinasabi po nating details ay makikita dito po sa Learner's Assessment Tool Annex 5. Kasi ang mag appear lamang po sa ating mga card and uh, sa ating SF9 and SF10 is Homeroom Guidance. So, for example, mga subjects natin, Science, English, Math, then sa pinakalas is Homeroom Guidance. Now, ilalagay lang po natin doon yung verbal description. So, yung pinaka-details niya po, ay makikita natin sa Learner's Assessment Tool. So, malinaw po na nakalagay sa memo na kailangan natin itong i-attach sa lahat ng mga school documents ng ating mga estudyante. Okay? Whenever being uh, issued to requesting party. So, ibig sabihin pag uh, nag-request po, for example, lumipat ang school, ng school ang isang estudyante, at kinuha niya, kinlim niya yung kanyang card, uh, kanyang SF9 and SF10, kailangan naka-attach din po doon yung ating Learner's Assessment Tool Annex 5. Okay? So, ito po. So, as we can see, sa kada quarter, meron tayong iba't-ibang life skills or competencies na dinidevelop. So, nakalagay po sa ating, uh, ayan, dito tayo sa, okay? Okay, okay. So, ito po. So, uh, Again, meron tayong mga life skills and competencies na kailangan i-develop through, of course, our homeroom guidance program, homeroom guidance modules. So, here we can measure this sa mga isasubmit na mga bata. Okay? So, sa mga, ano nila, sa mga output po nila, sa quality of output or work ng bata dahil uh, module, modular lamang po tayo. Kung lahat naman ay naisubmit, at na, na, sa tingin ninyo ay naisabuhay naman ng bata ang uh, content ng module, so, say for example, yung competency, competency na value others or value oneself. So, kung, kung kumpleto yung uh, mga outputs niya para sa particular um, competency na yon, so, it means to say na maaari natin bigyan ng pinakamataas na rating yung bata. Okay, so, nakaisabuhay niya naman, di po ba? So, ayan, so, mapapansin niyo nakalagay dyan, um, uh, name of learner, Section, name of section advisor, learning modality. At iba-iba po ang, uh, ang uh, ating uh, learner's guidance development assessment tool. So, meron po tayong uh, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, types of uh, homeroom guidance learner's uh, development assessment. So, meron tayo para sa kindergarten. Iba po ang para sa kindergarten. Iba po ang para sa grade 1 to 3 or the primary level. 
Iba din po ang para sa grade 4 to 6 or the intermediate level. Iba din po ang form para po sa junior high school or ito pong from grade 7 to 10. At iba din po ang form para sa ating grade 11 and 12 or para po sa senior high school. Now, tingnan po natin isa-isa kung ano po ang mga kabilang dito sa form na ito. So, kung papansin po ninyo, um, kailangan po nating ilagay ang pangalan ng learner, ang kanyang grade and section, ang pangalan ng advisor, ano ang klase ng learning modality. So, usually, tayo gumagamit ng printed, di ba po ba, di po ba, printed modules. So, and then nakalagay po dyan, to the class advisor, check the box to indicate your assessment guided by the scale below. Okay, so nakalagay dyan, no chance to observe. Zero, one, needs improvement, two, developing, three, sufficiently observed, four, develop, and commendable. So, pare-pareho lamang po ang uh, skill na yan uh, from kindergarten to um, senior high school. Pero magkakaiba lamang po siya sa mga competency. Okay, so uh, malinaw po yan na naiiba ang iba-iba uh, po ang ating uh, module, depende ay ating ang ating uh, learner's development assessment tool, depende po sa kanyang grade level. Okay. So, ayan. So, pagdating po sa module, um, naiiba po kasi yung levels of complexity. Depende din po sa grade level. So, say for example, so for valuing oneself, iba yung objective niya kay grade 1 at iba din kay grade 2 at iba din kay grade 3. At iba-iba din po yung mga nakalagay na mga activities. Okay. So, ayan po ang ating uh, Annex 5. So, Learners Development Assessment Tool. So, malinaw po na kailangan i-attach natin ito ating uh, SF9 and SF10. Now, just to give you an idea kung kailan pa natin dapat i-implement, ano ba yung mga kailangang modules na, na maibigay na natin pala sa ating mga estudyante. So, ayan, ito po ay uh, galing po sa, sa ano po, kay Ma'am Jonah sa Central Office. At ito po ay makikita natin sa Homeroom Guidance Philippines. So, maaari nyo pong uh, i-visit ang kanilang Facebook page para po updated tayo sa lahat ng mga Homeroom Guidance modules na inilalabas po nila or yung mga kung mayroon po sila mga announcement. Okay, for our for the, for first quarter, so we are expected na sa week 3 na po tayo, di po ba? So we are expected na nakapag para sa kinder, expected po na naipamigay na natin ang ating modules 1 and 2. Ayan, nakalagay po dyan ang schedule natin for first quarter. Okay? And also, ito po, meron na, meron na din, ito po ay last year, no? So, ipinatayin lang po natin kasi wala naman po talagang inilabas pa for this particular school year kung about the scheduling, kung anong week ba kailangan i-distribute itong module na to. So, accordingly, ipa-follow lang daw po natin yung schedule din last year. So, ito po yung schedule na kailangan natin i-follow. Okay? So, um, i ibibigay po natin ito sa ating mga homeroom guidance coordinators okay, or guidance advocates para po alam din nila kung ano na po ang mga kailangan na i-distribute. Okay? And uh, ito po ang sample ng ating cover ng ating homeroom guidance. Ganito po ang itsura ng ating homeroom guidance sa uh, learning materials. Okay? Ating homeroom guidance module. Ito po nga nasa uh, left side ang para sa elementary. Ito po ay yung isa naman po example ng grade 7 um, uh, Homeroom Guidance Module. Okay. So, ito po ang part ng ating mga module para po may idea lang tayo. So, alam ko naman na karamihan po sa atin ay nakapag-implement na nito last year. So, ito po ang, uh, ganito po ang itsura ng ating learning module. So, ito po ang content niya. Okay. So, nandyan yung learning objectives, materials, introduction. Okay. So, lahat po yan ay uh, makikita natin sa ating Homeroom Guidance Module. So, again, para sa ating uh, mga materials, ating mga modules, Maari natin ito makita sa DepEd LR portal or uh, dito po sa Division Office of uh, Division uh, Schools Division Office of Iriga. So, ako po ay meron ng compilation ng mga modules po para sa secondary. Okay, meron po akong updated na compilation ng mga modules for secondary. Pero ibig sabihin sa elementary, wala po tayo. So, kailangan yata natin mag-assign kung sino ang mag mag collate din ng mga materials para mas madali na lamang po ang pagbibigay natin sa ating mga um, sa ating mga uh, schools. Okay? And, ayan. Okay, so so, ayan. So, that is the last uh, part of my discussion. Okay? So, again, makikita natin ang lahat ng ito sa sa, at, sa atin ding uh, Facebook page ng Homeroom Guidance Philippines. Okay? So, today, in this time of pandemic, okay, sabi nga, 
kailangan daw na mas i-develop natin ang life skills ng ating mga estudyante. So, developing life skills is more important uh, uh, than learning the core subjects. Because we know that the, our children are, is, are our future. So, make sure that uh, we have to make sure that they have the skills needed for them to succeed. Okay? And of course, for our secondary learners, meron po ako mga pinrepair din na mga homeroom guidance video discussion na makikita po sa aking YouTube channel na Your Guidance Counselor. At uh, maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Sheila Bulawan, sa pagpupromote po ng aking YouTube channel dahil nandun po talaga ang aking mga homeroom guidance discussion na pinrepair ko last year pa and until now ay nagagamit pa rin na maraming school po dito sa Iriga and even in other schools here in the Philippines. So, Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa pakikinig at uh, sana po ay naunawaan nating mabuti uh, kung paano i-implement ang ating homeroom guidance program for school year, 20, school year 2021. Maraming maraming salamat po.